We continue with unit two of equity valuation and in this we are going to run an extension of our uh, understanding of uh, the discounted cash flow valuations. We are going to move ahead from the dividend discount model to come up with something new. Now what is that new? We will come to that. We have already seen there is an issue with the dividend discount models and what is that issue is that companies seldom pay too much dividend. What you see on the screen is the top 50 companies in India, right? Companies in India and there is a handful and what you see is the dividend payout ratio. How do you calculate that? Dividend divided by the net profit for the last available year, right? You will see only a handful of companies fall above 80%, right? Almost everyone else falls significantly below and most of them below 40% actually. So companies really, top 50 companies in India, do not pay very high dividends. And when I say very high dividends, as percentage of profits, for us to be able to value a company correctly using what is called as uh, the, the dividend discount model, it is important that companies end up paying a significant amount of their profits as dividends. Now that we don't see here because dividend payout ratio for most companies in the top 50 companies in India is actually below uh, the, the number of uh, 40%. We see HUL is high. We see Coal India is high. We probably see Hindustan Zinc is high. This is abnormally high. Probably this year profits were lower and uh, we see Nestle India is high. So there is a certain set of companies which is high. Rest all the companies are pretty low in terms of the amount of dividend that they are paying, right? So it's important that we derive an extension now to the dividend discount model. What is that extension, right? Because we can't use dividend discount model when companies are not really paying dividends. How do we really evaluate those companies, right? So that brings us to an extension which is called as the free cash flow. Due to inherent nature of low dividends in an emerging economy like India, we will now move towards another measure called free cash flows. What are free cash flows? Free cash flows could be of two types. They could be free cash flow to equity holders and free cash flow to firm holders. Firm holders are nothing but equity plus debt holders. So both the equity and debt guys, right? Free cash flows to equity are defined as the capacity of the company to pay dividends. It is the amount that the company can pay as dividends if it wants to, right? So this is the maximum amount that typically a company can pay in that year given that uh, this is the cash flow that the company has generated. In the free cash flow valuations, we inherently assume that what the company can pay is being paid out. That is being considered as a proxy for dividends, which means even if the company is not paying dividends, we are assuming that there is a possibility that they will pay out what is the capability or capacity of the company to pay dividends. They're going to pay that out. That's called free cash flow to equity. Now free cash flow to equity is very similar to your net cash flow. Right, with a small minor difference, which is any changes to the equity holders is not put in there. So how do you create it? Net profit plus depreciation minus changes to net working capital. Usually these three will form your cash flow from operating activities. That's your cash flow from investing activities and that's your cash flow from financing activities. Note that we do not make any changes of dividends here because free cash flow to equity is basically going to go into the hands of the equity holders and dividend is also going to them only. So whether you cut dividend out of it or you do not, we are anyway assuming that the entire amount is being paid out as dividends, right? Since this is the cash flow to equity holders, we are going to discount it using the cost of equity. So FCFE one, divided by one plus cost of equity plus FCFE two divided by one plus cost of equity square and so on and so forth. That is going to be the general formula if we are going to use free cash flow to equity holders, 
right now then an extension of this is what if we want to decide the value of the firm as a whole right if we want to de decide the value of the firm as a whole we will introduce a term called free cash flow to firm which will include debt and it will include equity so we are now going to use an amount that is going to be paid to both the debt and equity holders note two things here one we start with ebit and not net profit we are not starting with net profit that's because ebit includes the interest which is to be paid to the debt holders two changes to debt changes to debt have been basically removed from here that's because changes to debt are going to be a change to one part of the stakeholders which is the debt holders there right so practically that's kind of uh, frozen there since this is to both the stakeholders fcff1 you are going to discount it at the weighted average cost of capital fcff2 1 plus vac sorry 1 plus vac whole square so you are going to discount this at weighted average cost of capital because we are looking at cash flows to both equity and debt holders right you can find the value of the firm both ways in this case you will find the equity value directly you will find the equity value directly in this case you will first find the firm value and from the firm value you can subtract the debt claims and what you will get is equal is going to be equal to the equity value right that's how you basically solve but in an ideal scenario both of them should give you similar values if not the same value they should give you the similar values they can't give you widely disparate values in a utopian world where everything is under control they should give you the same equity value right now what's the relationship between fcfe and fcff right we see on the left side we have free cash flow to equity which includes net profit plus depreciation changes to net working capital capital expenditure changes to net debt and on the right side we see fcff so three of the terms depreciation net working capital capex depreciation net working capital capex are the same the only changes are net profit changes to net debt here and a bit here right so two things the way you can calculate fcfe from fcff if i open this up this basically is a bit minus tax on a bit right here it is net profit the next three terms are exactly the same right so a bit minus tax on a bit what is that equal to when we compare it with net profit probably plus something to understand this better let's actually solve this question right so we have data given fcff fcfe we have to calculate this is the data available let's go to an excel file and try and calculate this data so here we go we have this excel file here let's calculate the data so fcfe is going to be my net profit that's my net profit plus my depreciation minus any change in net working capital minus any capital expenditure and because we have put in capital expenditure as a negative number here I'm going to do a plus here right this I have assumed that as an outflow and plus any change in net debt right so that's 250 right so that's my free cash flow to equity that's 520 let's now try and uh, calculate the fcff that's going to start with a bit into 1 minus the tax rate right so i'm going to put a bit into 1 minus the tax rate that's this plus the depreciation minus the change in working capital minus the change in or sorry plus the capital expenditure because capital expenditure I've put it as negative here right so I've put the capex as negative that's why the term that's FCFF right now 
if you think about it, what is the difference between these two? So one difference is the change in net debt. If for a minute I was to make this as zero, then the difference is 140, right? What difference do we find? The difference is 140 between FCFF and FCFE, correct? How do I calculate this 140? If you note the interest value, if you note the interest value, that's 200. And if I do interest multiplied by one minus the tax rate, right? That's going to be 140, right? So effectively, if I look at the difference between these two, that difference amounts to 140. If I actually find the calculation, can I write this as a formula here? So let's go back to our file here. We find that FCFE is 270. Assuming this number is zero, we'll bring this into consideration again. FCFF is 410, right? So let's say FCFE plus the interest, so that's 270 plus 200, that's the interest, minus tax on the interest. So that's minus 60, and that's gonna be equal to 410. So do we have a formula here? Do we have a formula here where FCFE plus interest minus the tax of interest, tax on interest, and changes to net debt will give me the FCFF, correct? If I introduce the changes to net debt here in this Excel now, let's put this as 250, you'll find the difference is 110. So what are we doing? We are taking from FCFF to FCFE, to this add the interest, that's 200. From this, subtract the tax on interest, that is going to be 60 and from this subtract the change in net debt that is 250 what we get is 410 which is the same as free cash flow to firm so let's rewrite this relationship here let's rewrite this relationship here we are saying fcfe plus interest minus interest into tax rate minus changes to debt are going to give me the FCFF, correct? That's going to give me the free cash flow to firm. And that's the formula that I basically use. That's the relationship between these two. Once I have one and I have some of the other data available, we can recalculate these two. We can go from one to the other based on the data that is available. That's the difference. So from FCFE, I add interest minus tax on interest here and I remove the last part that will give me this data. This number is going to be exactly the same as a bit into one minus T and then I can arrive at what is called as FCFF, correct? So that's the relationship between FCFE and FCFF. What are the benefits of free cash flow valuations? This can be done for firms that do not pay dividends or enough dividends. And since we are assuming that all the money that can be paid as dividend is being paid out, we only have to project the financials of the firm. We only have to make future projections for what's going to be revenue, what's going to be cash flow and not on how much of its profits is it going to pay as dividends? That choice does not have to be projected because we are assuming that all the money that can be paid as dividends is being paid out as dividends. So we are not sitting and dissecting the fact that what is going to be the dividend next year. We're just saying whatever is available can be paid out as dividends and will be paid out as dividends. And hence, that's basically what, uh, what comes up as the overall number, correct? So that's basically the benefits of free cash flow valuations. As we come to an end of this particular section, please solve these two questions. What do we mean by free cash flows? And calculate FCFE and FCFF for the following data. CapEx is an outflow, that's an increase, 
and this is net debt is an inflow that's why it shows a positive number so use the signs carefully as you're trying to solve this question thank you